Hello, I'm Malcolm. And I'm Janice. How much do you know about the rights of people who have a disability? And how do you get a TV program off the ground? That's coming up next on... Out. So the voice still isn't quite back to normal. No, but you're getting there. I do believe... Slowly. Yeah, it is improving. I can sing. Oh, well, we don't really need to hear that now. Oh. <laughs> I, I was so you. hopeful. Look, Janice, um, as we go through life, and certainly because we've been in show business a lot, both you and I in our lives, we come across a lot of people who have a disability of some description. There are performers who have disabilities, there are politicians who have disabilities, and we're very lucky to have with us now Rick Neagle, who's the President of Dignity for Disability here in South Australia. Welcome to our time, Rick. Yeah, thank you. How did you become involved? Back in 2006, uh, my, my son had to engage with services. He has autism and uh, there wasn't a lot out there. So at the time... How old, sorry, how he, old at he, that he time? He would have been about, well, six he was. He was so, six. so he wasn't able to go to kindergarten or to school. Yeah. So we started doing a, uh, a program at home which required employing 25, uh, more than 25 hours a week, maybe 30, of therapists who were trained in behavioural therapy, $50,000 a year. Um, so quite extraordinary amounts of money. So, and that's what, cash money. What were you trying to wow. achieve with that? So it's like a program based on Pavlov's theory. You know, you, you, you do a task and you get a reward. Right. But, of course, rather than just giving a dog a, a biscuit, you had to progress the program. So there's a lot of skill involved in progressing it. So mm. we had a lot of support from Robin Young, Professor Robin Young, who's a friend of mine. She... She's, uh, well, she travels the world talking about autism and diagnosis now, so she put me onto her program and uh, we learnt it, um, employed therapists at our home, um, yeah, for two and a half years, so. Gosh. And that coupled with, you know, OT, hydrotherapy, all the other therapies that you put on board, mm. it, it's quite exhaustive, not just with your time, but financially. Of course, so it's a lot of money. It's, it's a huge amount of money. Uh, fortunately, we could afford it. We had means that we had resources. So, but the other 99% of people that can't afford it, um, nothing happens. So, mm. uh, part of my journey in life's been trying to do some things around causes and the like. And it was a great opportunity to obviously put my son at the front and advocate for him. And so we quickly found out that you couldn't get services from the uh, from the government. So, what you do is you create a political party. Oh. Then they talk to you. So ministers that used to bump me and others from, from their offices from time to time suddenly started meeting with you, so we got outcomes and look... Well, here in South Australia we actually did get an outcome because we had somebody in Parliament representing the... Yeah, and look, eventually Kelly Vincent was yep. her name. Um, we um, approached Kelly only a couple of weeks before the state election in 2010 and my friend Paul Collier, Dr Paul Collier, he... Uh, uh, he was a wheelchair user um, from an accident out at Alice Springs. He, uh, he was on the ballot, um, and unfortunately, the very next day after the ballot was drawn, uh, Paul died. Um, well, actually, it was a couple of days later, but he had a massive stroke. So and Kelly, Kelly was, was number two, up. and I said to, to Kelly at the time, look, don't worry, you won't need to do anything, and you won't get elected. And sure enough, the, the, the media, the preferences that we gained from the whole process, um, she got over the line, so eventually her 2% vote ended up being 11%, and the rest is history in eight years in, in government. To, to and she her. had a very yeah. interesting career too, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. She's a um, wonderful lady. Um, uh, she advocated for everyone, not just her own uh, issues, which were obviously she's a wheelchair user, so things like universal design and access are, are a big thing for her. but. You know, the deaf community, the vision impaired community, um, autism, of course, mm. and Kelly would, would mind me saying, but she has autism as well, as, mm -hmm. as cerebral palsy. And people with mental health issues, aged care sector, we, we took on the whole lot. Um, and she did a wonderful job. Changed legislation for people that, you know, suffered abuse at the hands of others. So uh, changed legislation around access and universal design. And, and applaud her many, many times. So, uh, yeah, we have a great mutual admiration for each other. But don't you think we, as human beings, not only do we need to work with each other, 
but in a way we've all got some sort of disability in our lives that perhaps society doesn't necessarily recognise. Everyone's on a spectrum somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. Yeah, whether it be political, autism, as you say, ex access. I've got problems with access for certain things, but nothing you'd see that is too visible. So, yeah, we all have uh, a lived experience of Well, something. even age becomes a disability. It you does. start not being able to do the things that you used to do oh. and you need help. You know, um, I suppose I was brought up as a kid in a church environment where if you needed something, you just yeah. rang a member of the church and they were there to help you out. That sort of seems to have been lost from our society because we're not as involved with churchy type movements, no matter what faith you, you follow. No, uh, religion's sort of taken. I, I spent 12 years at St Peter's College, so I got a divinity, as it was called, shoved down my throat, so to speak. And yes. I took a bit of it on board, but mm. I think religion and, and you know, political um, opinions have disappeared a lot out of our our lives and our communities and I think it just takes a few people to get things going and, and get onto their cause. Eventually you can change things. And well, I, you certainly have. Yeah, look, th well, yeah, look, I'm really proud of what um, we've been able to achieve and there's a lot of people around Supporting me. Supporting you, and, and yeah. I'm around other people But as it well. still takes you to step into the right direction, obviously, you know, and uh, are still helping others. Yes. Uh, yeah, I am Janice, and look, I'm still advocating for my son, who's 19, um, and obviously he's a priority. Yeah. Uh, you said daughter. a lovely thing just before we we went on air. You said, it doesn't matter, I still love him yes. in every way possible. Yeah. Uh, as we all do at children. I still celebrate yeah. the things he does. He does. Yeah. And even this week, uh, we've had a fair few challenges, puberty and anxiety and bipolar mood disorder and autism and all those things put together yeah. can create a, a fairly vicious cocktail at times but but uh, he's moving a little bit beyond that and with the help of a little bit of medication and and some more stability in his life he's he's gone from someone who's quite confused to someone who's got his belly laugh back again so okay. and it's just those simple things lovely. for me uh, yeah. just to walk with him and he's laughing and we joke around and uh, you know he's wonderful and he's a very smart young man and I don't we, we've never had him diagnosed with an intellectual disability, but everyone would assume that he does because he, he yep. doesn't read and he doesn't write. But I can tell you um, intellectual disability is on a spectrum too, and I think just doing arithmetic in English doesn't necessarily mean that you have an intellectual disability. So yeah. if you can't, can't perform those tasks... No. The school that he goes to, which is St Patrick's School, which is over in Dulwich, where I used to I live... I know. It's yeah, it's a great school. It's yeah, beautiful. I know it well. And, yeah. Only because it's around the corner from where I live. <laughs> there you go. Which street was that? Oh, no. But, hang on, we can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Just, sorry, I'll <laughs> no, um, look, what's, what's really important, I think, here is the understanding, though, that whilst governments can do so much, they can't do everything, that you need not just you personally, but we all need people around us to help us through some of the simplest things in life and we need professional help in more complex parts of life. Would you agree? Yeah, look, absolutely. Uh, I've always maintained... I've had a bit of a, a centrist, a bit slighter left, I guess, um, attitude to politics, but I, I certainly feel like the both major parties have lost their way. Um, even the... I think the country has felt that up until recently. Yeah, and they do the best job to try and still get rid of us. And in fact, they changed legislation to get rid of um, get rid of us at the last state election, as well as Nick Xenophon. So, uh, as disappointing as that may seem, um, and unfortunately, the, the vote for the independents and minority parties was more than every other election before it. And there's this constant wave upwards of support. Do you think we need to go back not to have the political parties and to have individuals just standing that collect people who have a like mind? That's how it started. Look, it did, and we could take a lot of uh, advice from Scandinavian parliaments where a lot of those sorts of uh, coalitions occur. In fact, in parliaments uh, in Scandinavian countries, they sit in their seat, not according to the party, but they sit in alphabetic order, so you can end oh, up sitting okay. next to An someone opposition. with a different view. Yeah. Now, I'm sure the political uh, MPs as such do talk to one another, but... It, it creates... A, just the visual effect of that is a, is a huge statement and we certainly have lost our way. I've always advocated in, in the political um, uh, landscape that, that what you need to do uh, as a government is to look after people that 
are needy, that are disadvantaged, and not to benefit your mates who are necessarily... Yeah, <laughs> although other... you could very much argue against that, that without money coming into government funds, that it has to come from perhaps the high end of town. But I guess that's another discussion, because really discussion. <laughs> it's very much about what can we do in the future with disabled people, isn't it? Well, yes, and... and um, how can we help them most of the point? Well, the NDIS has been a, a, a very difficult thing to navigate. And, and yes, there's yeah. $22 billion in, in the sector at the moment, but it's getting cut and slashed and mixed around. People not getting the packages that they so necessarily need for their, for their children or, or for their adult it's children. It's the fast tracking it's when the, it's needed, is it? Is it's that... more about the lack of... Uh, look, I, I'm very careful what I say here, but... That the people that have come into the sector aren't necessarily, and these are people being employed by the NDIA, mm -hmm. uh, don't have the necessary skills that are required, such as the people who advocate for children and right. adults with disability. And the outcomes that we're getting are not the desired outcomes that we necessarily want. So a lot of money is getting wasted, uh, a lot of service providers are losing money um, and unfolding and merging together. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of transformation happening in this private sector space so there's at least there's money and there's opportunities but I think there should have been a far better it's how it's scholarly. used and how it comes together yes it, for the service is. look it's been great to talk to you um, in the in the short future you should come back and we should continue this discussion because I'm sure there's a lot more questions that we'll have and you'll have too as to how we can help people who fall into that category and we'll be back in a moment to find out just how you put a tv show together we're back we are are you a funny girl oh well Funny haha -ha or funny peculiar? Oh, all of the, all of the above. Because we, our next guest is all of the above as well. Okay. Welcome, Jason Chong. I am a funny girl. You're very correct. Yes, you are. Yes. I know. I can see it in your face. <laughs> Jason, what a pleasure it is to have you on our time because yes. you used to make these things go to air, didn't you? Yeah, I used to be uh, the broadcast and digital manager at Channel 44. See, look at that Italy. title. It's important, very important. Yes, person. very important. A role person. I was very unqualified for. But, <laughs> Shh, don't yeah. tell no, but that's what community television is about. Absolutely, it? yeah. About I learned a lot. The opportunity. Yeah. yeah, it was very good. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. But um, you have been, as long as I've known you anyway, a comedian, a stand up comic. Yeah, yeah. Here's a deep and meaningful question. Okay. Why is stand up, or why has stand up become such a big thing in the entertainment industry? Because it's easy and no one can tell you not to do it. And it's cheap? Yeah, all you need is a microphone and <laughs> someone sitting in front of you. Yes. And, yeah, you, you can call yourself a stand-up comedian without ever going to stand-up comedy university. You can just have a go and then you're a stand-up comedy. But you did. You did go to a comedy university, <laughs> I did. so to speak. Yes, it was more like a kindergarten. Yeah. Can we talk about that? Because Absolutely. the man who actually instigated that was Dave Flanagan. Yes, and we know him very well. Mm, we do. Yeah. And just recently we had... Um, Mr Snotbottom on the show. Oh, yes. <laughs> who began there. <laughs> Absolutely. Mark Trenworth. Yeah, he showed me how to use the mixing desk at Comics Comedy Cellars. There you go. Uh, but drop a few other names of people who started around that same time. Uh, around the same time as me, guys like uh, Mike Klimczak, uh, Craig Egan was a few years before me, yep. uh, Mickey D, or Mike, Mike Dwyer, or whatever he's called Probably now. Probably one of the most famous female comedians in the country. Fiona. Well. Fiona, Fiona Lachlan, yes, uh, was, was one of the first fringe shows I saw at, at comics, yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah, It's amazing. And Dave mm. is no longer with us, but he no. started something that, that in a way has been carried on by the club that we're talking about tonight. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. So um, This morning or this afternoon or whatever time people <laughs> are watching this program. Yeah, my, my first interaction with, with kind of comedy was, was doing a, a, a comedy school that, that Dave was putting on uh, where he would kind of take you for ten weeks and, and um, show you the ropes and work on material and give you a chance to fail. And then at the end we did a show in front of our friends and family and it was a really fun show and everyone was like, oh, let's all keep in touch and do this forever. 
Uh, and yeah, it was really, really fun and, and really. And some do and some don't. Absolutely, yeah. And yep. you know, some people didn't didn't want to become famous comedians. They just wanted to just have the experience. Yeah, a bit more confidence really? and stuff. So uh, yeah, so that's kind of what I'm what I'm trying to do uh, with the black box experiment. So, um, so it's that's a, what it's called. It's called yes. the black box experiment. Yes, because it's all centered around pilots and yeah. the black box. Not is, pilots. Is, is how you can tell if it's flying a plane. <laughs> well, a little bit. Yeah, oh. the black box in a plane is how you can tell oh, okay. if the pilot is working. And properly. It's all oh, the the. Yeah. I that too. Hey, did yes, you see sure. that same program? Yeah. That was only on reason. I knew that, but I didn't put the two <laughs> things together. No, I'm very sneaky. Very clever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so the whole holiday. already idea. had some occur. Yes, absolutely. So we're, we're midway through uh, the second show now. Uh, Just explain how it all works and, and who's involved. Yeah, so every month uh, I work with someone uh, that, I, that I like. Uh, it doesn't have to be a comic, but it can be... Uh, I'm working with Would be a, preferable, wouldn't it? Absolutely, but the, the, the first show is with a, um, a radio producer um, okay. who's been around entertainment for a while and, and has... Actually, she got her first start here at... On uh, Channel Thirty One back in the day, hosting okay. a show for for Uni SA, right. um, and we spend a month of, of live shows, kind of working out a TV concept idea, and, and then we film the last is, one. And this is at this is at Rhino Room in yep. the in the city. So uh, I think one thirty one Peary Street, okay. um, the in home Adelaide. of comedy. Yeah, uh, and then we film the last one, and and that becomes the TV pilot. So it's a chance for people to kind of who think they might have an idea to have a crack and, you know, over the you know, three or four weeks really get it good and, and practice and, and, and try a few things and have some fail and then, and then the last one is the well, one that Well, because so. that's how it's changed, isn't it? The industry mm. has changed because back in the old days, like when we first started in television, you had TV producers that worked for a network and they'd sit around desks and try and come up with great ideas or knock-off ideas from the UK or America. Yeah. Um, and then that would become the next blankety blanks or whatever the show was. Yeah. But this is really mm. looking for original ideas, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Or, or, um, Different. Yeah, and, and the thing is that like all those great TV stations that you guys would have been in the studios for these amazing like times that I, w I wish I was around for. None of those TV stations have studios anymore. So, no. No. I mean, this studio might be producing the most out of anywhere. The only one. Is. The yeah. only it's one. incredible. The so, only one left, yeah. yeah, but also the cost of production and stuff has, has come down. So, mm. you know, you can do things with... On your phone. You know, yeah, well, hopefully a little bit better than that. Uh, but, yeah, you can really... Um, Never stop me. Yeah, you can really do things <laughs> that look as good as, yeah. as TV. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's so much cheaper. Well, so TV's become realer, so to speak. Mm. It's one of the things with this program that we try to do, as we just said before we started the chat, don't tell us too much before we start. Because yeah. a lot of guests forget that they think, oh, I've already said that, I won't say that again, mm. and we miss the real purpose that they're here for. Mm. So for us, this is very much um, come as you are and... We ask the questions and you've got the answers, sort yeah, of thing. Real conversation and listening and yeah, it's all great. that stuff. Yes, yeah, not mm. doing it with your thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's been in the pipeline? What What do you think is going to happen with all this? Well, who knows what's going to happen? So, uh, the, the first one was a, a love and dating kind of panel show, which was a lot of fun. Uh, this month is... Um, is now, you're married. You couldn't have been part of that. No, I was, I was just helping out. Oh. It, was, it was fine. I didn't get in the bed with anyone. Okay. Oh, um, is it that sort of There's going to be a bed on stage. That's okay. where all the guests will sit. Okay. Anyway, uh, the, the one we... <laughs> we can change this whole program. I know. Yeah, absolutely. The bed. We've got a bed now that we're not doing anything with, if you like. <laughs> Good over there in this oh, new no. show. <laughs> oh, no. um, then there's a, a, right now there's like a blankety blank style show mm -hmm. uh, with a comedian called Big Al who's been around for a while and yes. he uh, has an amazing laugh and the whole idea of the show is just to make him laugh, really. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, and it's a, it's a lot of fun. And uh, next month I'll be trying one, uh, which will be uh, a game show but the, the idea is that it's um, er, the people in the audience have their mobile phones out and they vote on things uh, that the contestants on stage have to try and guess what the audience is voting for. So, okay. so it's very interactive and the idea of that is that, you know, live TV is something that we don't have much of anymore. So yeah. if that could become a pilot, then, you know, you could have people in Adelaide or Australia all voting at the same, voting time, at the same time and it being going up on the, on the screen the straight away. The only problem is the time frame between Perth and... Well, yeah, the Perth actually. one. Don't worry yeah, about that. Okay. Perth can do it in the morning when they get up and then okay. the rest of us can, okay. can do it. It's okay. Is that how Good time works? I don't know. Yeah, but there's also, um, yeah, a, a, a game show that's like, kind of like, a bit like Family Feud but more for, uh, for university kind of courses. So instead of families, it's university friends. Oh, okay. Um, uh, we're going to do a month. Well, that, that's an interesting thing to re-engage people mm. with free to air if that's yeah, where it ends up. Yeah. Because that's where we're losing our TV. Mm. Um, yeah. 
our ability to communicate with people. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's going to be a whole bunch of live script readings as well because a lot of people said, oh, I've got a script in my, in my drawer that I've never... I've never got out, so we're going to put all of them on stage for a month. Um, and the last one's going to be a, a, a playwright called Caleb Lewis, who's won a whole bunch of awards and, and was born in Adelaide, and he's coming back to do um, like a, a sitcom that, that is essentially a role, is determined by dice rolling. So oh, it's going to be like a live improvised, yeah, dice rolling sitcom. That's an interesting concept. How long is that program? Who knows? I was going to say. I'll let you know when it's done <laughs> and we'll have to cut it all down. And yes, a bit of editing there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Jason, um, is this, do you feel this is the way that we need to go for the future to find the new stuff that's going to re-engage people? I think so. I mean, everyone's kind of got a good idea, but um, it's it's very hard to to get those good ideas out there. Yeah. So, uh, and there's so much talent in Adelaide. Um, and you're doing yeah. this with community television. Yeah, yeah. So Channel Forty Four is helping out with the filming right. and, and stuff, which is which how great. important. We've had these conversations before, but how important is community television to remain? Do you feel it's it's amazing. Uh, the the team works so hard. They're such a tiny team. Uh, and uh, it's never been in as good a shape. And it's as about it volunteers. Now. Yeah, the volunteers are amazing. And I went in there the other day, and you know, when, when I started there uh, three years ago, there was, I think, three or four volunteers. And now there's like a whole room for they're all at that desk and they're all getting stuff done and producing stuff. And it's, it's, it's really great to see, yeah. Mm. Every time I go there, I'm like, oh, I miss this place. <laughs> well, because it, because it is like the melting pot of everything, isn't it? Mm. It's people wanting to be in, people with a little bit of experience. Why can't we do that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's probably the biggest um, hang-up that people have oh. who are progressed with the industry. It's, well, you can't do that. Mm. Well, why? Why can't we do that? No, yeah. it's good to know that there's somewhere that's giving uh, people the opportunity to yeah, try absolutely. different yeah. things. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with TV, you need, you know, a couple of friends with you because it, it's, a, it's a job that, you know, takes a lot of people. So yeah. it's, it's great. Well, that, not only that, but from the audience perspective, laughing in a group is great. And we've mm. lost that family group watching telly together um, that may, be, may have before, like... Um, before television, you'd all sit around the radio and maybe before that, you'd go out and see a live variety show, a vaudeville show or whatever. Oh. And just in the progression of things, this separation of human beings is a bit sad, really. Yeah. You know, that we're all just focused on a phone or a screen, but we don't have this ability. Mm. Yeah, there's nothing better know. than being in an audience and in oh. a dark room and you can just laugh with everyone else. When it's everybody great. laughs together, that, that rolls, doesn't mm. it? What about you now? What's your big plan for the future? What for, for Mr. Chong? When are we? I, I need more notice for this. You're like, this is like <laughs> my wife asking me. Sorry. So I'm 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 back in Adelaide now. I uh, was living in Melbourne for a bit, and and I'm back here, and uh, I want to I want to make TV. So yeah, it's very hard. That's the plan. To wait for someone else to ask me to do it, so I'm going to do it D myself. That is the truth. Mm. Never wait for somebody else. Have a go. Yeah. Absolutely. Find other people that feel the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Look, we've got to go, but we're not going completely. We'll be back after this break with Jason and our first guest with a couple of other points that you should know. Stay with us. We are, Rick. Um, we were just talking a moment ago about the changes of, of things and the fact that you have a daughter and as a family member feeling responsible for her brother in the future. Yeah, and look, a lot about what Dignity Party is about was that parents of, of children with disabilities really form the party more so to help the siblings because our biggest fear is when we're gone, yes. what's going to happen. So what I've done is advocate for her in a sense. So you know, it's been more my, my journey is through her and also my son. So it's yeah. not just about him. Fantastic. Um, just um, great pride in the human condition of people, I think, to take on that responsibility. There's a lot of people out there doing the same. Mm. Um, and I think we should trust our, our own journeys and just do what's good for people. Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. And Jason, what are you going to go for? Uh, I'm definitely uh, going to go for this, uh, this foundation. I don't know if you know anything about it. <laughs> it's called the... Well, I can't read it. What is it it's called? The Count Me In Foundation. The Count Me In Foundation. And I've just learned about it and it's doing great stuff. And that's often where comedy can help. Absolutely. Yes, but yes. in yourself... Myself, I, uh, I, I want to stay in Adelaide and, and be an entertainer. And so I need to figure out how to do that. 
But I think that this TV idea might be a good way to go. Well, you're doing it some already. other people as well. But you are doing it already. You're mm. a funny, funny man on stage. And so are you, Janice. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, you're and a funny man. <laughs> yeah. I thought oh, she is. I thought oh, she funny changes. Too. Yeah. We have to go. We've got ten seconds to say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. So until next time, keep yourself nice to them. Take care. Bye.